Welcome, in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy A55 and today I will show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, to get started, uh, let's first start off by opening up our settings and we're gonna now navigate under to the display section and here we can find things like the dark and a light mode, you can choose one of those, but um, you do also have additional settings like dark mode settings which allows you to swap between these two modes light and dark either from sunset to sunrise or on a custom schedule basically allowing you to have best of both worlds light mode during the daytime and dark mode during the nighttime now going back and scrolling down a little bit further we have motion smoothness we have it set to adaptive which will be actually the best option for majority of the people but if you want to preserve some of your battery, you could actually select it to standard and you actually might get a little bit better battery life with specifically screen on a time. Now, continuing on, scrolling further down under the display, we have the screen mode and Samsung does select or set all the devices to vivid. And personally, specifically for Samsung, I find it to be way too overdone and I prefer the natural tones. Now on the camera that might not be as visible, but you can see a bit of a change right here. So I do personally prefer the natural tones as the uh, vivid ones. In certain scenarios, they just look unnatural and I personally don't like it. I do understand it though why Samsung does provide it, provide us with this basically mode enabled by default. And to explain it, if you're in a store and you're looking at lines of phones, the one that will catch your eye probably will be the one with most vibrant colors, hence a vivid mode. Now, anyway, scrolling a little bit further down, we have edge panel, which it's enabled by default and it's this thing right here that I can just pull out. Now by default, it will have just a couple applications uh, below here that will not change and then a couple that will continue to change. And you can also press right here on this grid and this will show you all the installed applications on your device, uh, which allows you to, for instance, open it up from there. You can also grab these applications by holding them, which will open them up in a pop-up view. But where this mode actually shines even more is with the ability for you to, well, number one, customize it so you can add more applications into it. And I think it's limited to about 22 applications that you can add into this side panel, which is already plenty enough in my opinion. Uh, but furthermore, you have the option to click right here on the gear. This will take you to the settings where we were, just to kind of showcase this. So if you click on the text right here on the edge panel, it just takes you back to the same place. Now in here, we have option to add additional panels. So these are the ones that you have choice from that actually come with the device, but you can also navigate to the Galaxy Store and download additional ones. Though keep in mind, most of them are paid, specifically the better ones, which kind of sucks, but do want to point that out. So that's one thing. Number two, uh, one of the probably better options is the ability to select app combos. So if, for instance, you like to run something like Chrome and YouTube at the same time, we can now open up both of these applications and then from the recent, you're going to click on the uh, image there. You're going to select open in split screen view. The first application that you do this to will always go to the top, hence that's why I selected uh, YouTube. And then from there we can, I guess, select from the apps, something like Chrome. So right now we have two different applications running at the same time. Now what I can do now is close it, pull out the panel, and you can see it right here. Now, right now this is showing a recent application. So what you want to do is grab it, then drag it to the bottom, drop it, and now you have access to it. And you can just pop it open at any time. I do want to warn, uh, sometimes it might be a little bit wonky where it won't want to open up s some application combinations which you did set up specifically, uh, but that's just limitation of Samsung and not something that you have done incorrectly. As long as you see these applications show up here, everything should be good. If it's not working, uh, then it's just a fault of Samsung and applications that just don't want to cooperate. 
And as you can also see, it actually remembers the position of the bar right here. So that's another positive. Okay, now going back to the settings, uh, let's continue on. I don't think there's anything else in here that I want to show. But we do have a redirect side button. And here you can select what will happen when you hold your power button, which I personally prefer to have the power off menu. I despise Bixby. So you can change that right here. The default option should be Bixby, by, if I remember correctly. And additionally, you have the option for double pressing. Now, if you want to use something like Google um, Assistant, technically you can't set it up right here, but you could set it up as a double press open application. So that could work that way. Uh, now, if you don't want any kind of double press action, you can turn it off in here. Okay. Now, continuing on into another uh, option, which in this one is specific to Samsung only. Uh, this will be the adaptive sound. Now, we do need to navigate to sound and vibration from the main settings page and then scroll down to sound quality and effects and then select allow, adapt sound, toggle that on, tap on the text, again, allow. And we're going to scroll down and we have a couple options. So we have the under 30, 30 to 60 and 60 and over. These are the presets that you can choose from, though I don't recommend utilizing those. What I do recommend doing is the add personalized sound profile. Now to actually set it up, you will need to have some kind of earbuds or headphones for this that are connected to your device right now. This will not work with speakers. I do want to stress this. It only works with something like headphones or earbuds. You can only then set it up. Possibly it could work with speakers, uh, but I have never checked it out if it actually allows you to do this. And when you select start, when you have connected ear earbuds or headphones, uh, it will start playing series of different sounds, high and low pitch, either through left or right ear. And all you need to do is select if you can hear them. Now this works really well in creating a custom equalizer specifically to your hearing, but it only it doesn't only stop at the hearing. It also allows you to make your earbuds sound a little bit better if they are at a lower end. So lower end earbuds usually struggle to reproduce specific sounds. Um, and when going through the customization right there, the equalizer that it creates, if the device plays one of those tones that the earbud just fails to produce because it's at a lower quality, uh, and it's just not tuned that way. Uh, the phone, obviously you won't be able to hear it. The phone will detect that because you select that you don't hear it and it will boost this frequency to be louder. And hopefully at that point, the earbud can now produce this sound in some kind of fashion. So you might actually have a richer sounding earbuds by going through the setup. In any case, uh, going to the last option that I want to showcase, it's the gesture navigation. Now that should be located under general management, I believe, or not. I can never figure out where Samsung hides their things. Oh, for goodness. I'm just gonna search for it as it's just so annoying. Um, so, Navigation just no. Oh wow! I know it's somewhere here. It's Samsung, so they do have it. As basically, Google beats them into submission to add it. Just where? It's a best question. Oh, there we go. Navigation bar. You know. Everyone else calls it gesture navigation. Samsung decided to be freaking annoying. In any case, uh, once you actually find it, uh, you can swap it between right here. And I personally do prefer gestures, so that's what I'm going to select. Uh, we do also have more options to make it a little bit more sensitive or less sensitive to your swipes from left and right and just home. Uh, but what you will see is that there is an option missing. Um, there was an option to hide the bar at the bottom, as it does still take some of the space compared to other devices would just make this white part transparent so it doesn't get in the way but Samsung again decides to be freaking annoying about it and oh, 
I am pointing that out because it's a bit infuriating. They used to have this option, but instead of fixing the damn thing, they decided to completely remove it. Fixing because uh, when you would hide the gesture bar, it still worked the same way, but the way they hide it is in the most stupidest way possible, which is by shifting it off, to this, off the bottom to the screen. Uh, therefore, sometimes when you're trying to swipe up, it would just go completely stupid and not know what you're trying to do because the bar is actually below the screen. So it needs to be way more accurate. Um, so instead of, you know, fixing it and actually adding opacity to the, the damn thing, they decided to completely remove this setting. So yeah, I'm a bit salty about that one. Um, because instead of doing the bare minimum, they just decide to completely remove that option. But anyway, with that being said, I'm going to leave it at this note. And uh, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.